everybody, welcome back and welcome back to Marching In With Casseroles. This will be my final casserole for this collaboration. Mom still has one on Friday. Um, our 16 hour channels, I think we have two or three more this week. If you haven't went and watched any of the ones in the past, please go back and watch them. We had a lot of really good ones. Um, what you need to do is go to each one of the videos, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. A comment is the most important thing because at the end of the month on the 31st at 7 p.m., I will be giving away this kitchen um, casserole package. It's going to be a food processor, three bamboo cutting boards, two different sets of casserole dishes, one glass, one stoneware, and finally a kitchen or a casserole carrier. It's a double casserole carrier. So if you're gonna take your casseroles to a church picnic or just any kind of gathering, going over to Mom and Am's, you got something to take your casseroles and everything else you can use to make those casseroles. Now, so far I haven't seen anyone do a breakfast casserole. So today, that's what I'm going to do for you, is a breakfast casserole. I've already got a half a pound of breakfast sausage um, fried off over here, almost fried off. You can use hot, spicy if you like. I did not use that, I just used a mild. And then I got half of a white onion that I'm gonna put in here, because I just want that to soften up a bit. We'll set that over there out of the way. Let's get this onion incorporated into the meat. Whoops, and there goes an onion jumping out. We'll go put him right back in there. All right, we're gonna let that cook down a little bit. First, I do wanna salt and pepper it. I like to salt and pepper, as you guys know, season every layer. So the sausage had seasonings, but those onion did not. So there we go. And I'm just gonna cover that with, back with the lids, mainly so it's a little bit quiet for us. And I'm just gonna put it down on low. Now, to this casserole, you need four eggs. And anytime you read a recipe that says four eggs, what are you gonna go get? Four chicken eggs. I don't have chickens, I have quail, as you guys know. And I have these beautiful quail eggs. And I'm telling you, every one of them is just different little work of art. Some of them are light colored, some are dark colored. I get some that are almost green. The girls are going crazy right now laying. I like these here that have the big brown spots on them. So now if you're lucky enough to have quail eggs, and let me tell you, quail eggs are a lot healthier than chicken eggs. I will put a link below down to my website at gregsdashkitchen.com and it's gonna tell you how much better quail eggs really are for you than chicken eggs. A lot of people are also allergic to chicken eggs. That's why when you go get a flu shot, they always say to you, are you allergic to eggs? Most people that are allergic to chicken eggs are not allergic to quail eggs. So you might wanna try that as well. But since we're going to be using quail eggs, you need three quail eggs for every egg. Since I'm gonna use four, I'm gonna do my multiplication in my head. I can do that. It's 12 and I'm gonna use 12 of my quail eggs. So let me get a bowl so we can get that started. And I need a little something. Well, hold on. I just need a container to put the shells in as I crack these. And if you guys notice, my table is a little bit higher. It's a little bit shaky. I just put this together to be able to do this last video because as you notice, I now have a pantry. I told you we're redoing everything here. This is our camper. We have a big old living room added onto it with a fireplace over here, TVs up there. So we did a little wrap around here and have my pantry and just move the refrigerator over. It's great. I have a lot more storage now. So you can either peel or yeah, peel, peel your eggs. You can either crack your eggs. And let me tell you, quail eggs are a little bit brittle or you can use these cute little scissors. They're called quail egg scissors or cigar scissors. And you can get them on Amazon. I got a link down below also because I have them in my store. That's where I get them from. And all you have to do is literally put the pointed side into the egg and just squeeze it across and it takes off the top, pour out the egg. That's all there is to it. Mom asked me to save these eggs for her because she wants to do some kind of little art project. So I think I'll save these for her. And if you notice, my eggs are bright orange. I don't know if you can see that. I feed them not only a non-GMO uh, quail food, it's a wild bird, 
uh, crumble. But now that it's spring and I've got purple dead nettle growing everywhere around here, found out they like it. And now I've been picking that and feeding it to them. And now when I walk out to my quail pen, they're running up to the front screaming and squawking, waiting for me to get some dead nettle for them. And they literally watch me walk around and picking it and bringing it to them. So my eggs are very healthy. They're nice and bright. That's why you want to have fresh farm eggs, even, especially chicken eggs, because you're going to have a prettier, brighter yolk, much healthier for you. And instead of that kind of yellowish cream colored yolk, that's not as healthy and not as tasty. Now you might also notice that quail eggs have a very big yolk compared to the white. So the the percentage of yolk to white is a lot more in a quail egg, more white to yellow, the white to the yolk in the chicken egg. So these are a lot creamier and richer. And I'm not counting. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. This one I think is from Holly. If you notice this egg as compared to one of the regular ones, it's a lot bigger. Holly is the white quail that we hatched here and she's a jumbo so she has much larger eggs two four y'all y'all made me quit counting right eight nine ten eleven and this should be twelve someone out there needs to help count or i'm gonna forget and the last egg in it goes so i got my 12 eggs i'm just gonna put these aside here in the sink wipe off my hands and we'll put the rest of these beauties right over here. Now, I don't have to refrigerate these because even with, as same thing with the chicken egg, when they're fresh farm eggs, they have a bloom on them when the hen, whether it's a chicken or um, any kind of fowl or the um, quail, lay it, they put like a bloom on it that actually seals all the pores on it so bacteria can't get in. So these are good on the counter for like two to three, four weeks. And then if you wash them, you do need to put them in the refrigerator so bacteria doesn't get into it, cools them down, keeps them safe. So now I'm going to just mix up these eggs. And you're gonna notice my mixture is a lot more orangey than it is yellow from those fresh eggs. There we go. And then to that, I am going to add to do my peppers. Now I'm using my dried peppers. The recipe calls for a half of a green pepper and half of an orange pepper or red pepper or yellow just to give it some color. So I've got all the colors here and I do have some water still in it from where I've reconstituted it. I'm going to leave that in because that has flavor from the peppers. I'm just going to put those all in there. It's been nice having peppers all winter long for my dehydrated ones. And then I'm going to put about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more of garlic powder, or garlic, minced garlic. I'll put the garlic powder in here in just a second, because everybody knows I love my garlic. All right. Once I use these things, I'm going to set them aside so I know that I've got them done. And then I'm going to now add the garlic powder, probably about half a teaspoon. You can adjust that how much you want. If you don't want to put the garlic powder in, you don't have to. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of onion powder. This is the onion powder that mom dehydrated for us last fall. I'm going to add about three-fourths of a cup of half and half. There we go. Now this recipe usually is for a 9 by 13 I have basically half the recipe so I can use a smaller casserole dish because we don't need all of that. I'm going to put in a little bit of hot sauce. This is optional. It's not going to make it hot. You're just going to get the flavor of it. So you can put as much or as little or none in it as you like. I'm going to put in some, this is my oregano and I'm almost out of oregano. So I can't wait to get it growing again. Now this is dried oregano, so you want half as much dried oregano as you would fresh oregano, because with the dryness, it's more condensed, it has a flavor more condensed and compacted in it. So if you're using fresh, you're gonna use double that. And then I'm going to put in my cheese. I'm gonna put about a 
half a cup to three quarters of a cup in the actual mixture. And I'm going to take a second here and stir around my onions and peppers. They seem to be pretty well cooked. So I can turn that off. So let's just mix that all together. Now, if you were using fresh peppers, I would have put them in with the onions to cook down and soften. Since mine were dehydrated, they're soft when they reconstitute. And speaking of reconstituted, I'm using one box of this Hungry Jack hash brown potatoes. It is 4.2 ounces. So you can use bagged frozen, and if they're frozen, you do not have to thaw them. You could even use tater tots and just chop them up a little bit. I've got one box of that. So let me get some of this out of the way so we can get our casserole dish over here. And I've already buttered the casserole dish. So a lot of butter in this recipe because I have one stick of butter melted. And I'm just gonna take these hash browns and I pour, put in boiling water and just let them sit. And then once they reconstitute, I drained out the extra water. So we're just gonna empty that down in the bottom of the pan. There we go. I'm gonna spread those out evenly. Get this moved up in front where you guys can see it because I know the side camera can't see it because I've got my meat over here. And now we're going to pour the butter, and it's one stick of butter that I melted in the microwave. We're just going to pour that evenly across the top of the hash browns. It's just going to season that really well. And now I'm going to salt and pepper my hash browns. Actually, I better salt and pepper this mixture. This is nothing in here was out of a can, so I know it needs salt and pepper. There's no extra sodium in there. And you can just salt and pepper to taste. A lot of people don't use a lot of salt, so if you don't, you don't have to use a lot. So let's get that mixed up again. I've already got my oven preheating back here to 450 degrees. Now I'm going to take some cheese and just put over the top of the hash browns and you can use as much or as little as you'd like and now we're just going to pour the egg mixture actually you know what I about got ahead of myself next we're going to put the uh, sausage and onion mixture right in here Now those onions are just softened up. I like a little crunch to my onions. If you want, don't like the crunchiness of the onions, you can cook them down until they're nice and soft. Or you can leave the onions out. It's totally up to you. Some people don't like onions. We're going to spread that around evenly. You get rid of this. I don't have a lot of room right now, so it goes down there. And I'm going to set this right down here as well. And now we will take our quail egg mixture, our eggs, and just pour it right over top. And that's just gonna all soak right down into those hash browns. And just like a good souffle, it's they're going to bake up. But just get that nice and spread around. Oops, got an onion out. And now I'm going to top this with just a little bit more cheese. You can see there is cheese on the top, but I love my cheese. So I'm just going to put a little bit more on top. Put it in the oven about 20, 25 minutes. Just got to get those eggs to cook. And then we'll be back. <laughs> Okay, we're back and I believe it's 
It's been about 40 minutes. It's 35 to 45 minutes. I think I told you wrong at the beginning. And I believe it is set. Just put a knife in, just like testing bread. Or not bread, but yeah, I guess cornbread. You could do it that way. Now, it is bubbling like crazy around the edges. I'm going to try to tip it up and show you guys. But I'm also going to try not to burn myself or spill it all over the place. So, there it is, all bubbly. That butter's coming up and around from the side. Give you a look over here. It smells wonderful. Now, like I said, you could just change this around any way you want. If you want to add, add some broccoli, cauliflower, any kind of vegetable you want. Maybe you had leftovers in the refrigerator from the Friday or Saturday and you want to do this Sunday morning casserole. You can add those things into it. You can change the cheese up. As mom would say, make it your own. Um... I really don't want to put my face in this right now. It is bubbling. So let me scoot it over a little bit so I can get a plate over here. And I will decorate it. Take some time. Got my dried parsley here. Just put a little dried parsley right on top. Okay, let me get a plate. And I'm going to try to cut in this without burning myself. Actually, let's get a knife. Because this cheese and the peppers have basically caramelized on top. I'm going to enjoy this. Now you could eat this just like this. You could put some sour cream and chives on top. Maybe a little bit of salsa and sour cream. Whatever you like. I'm trying to make sure. Yeah, it's not stuck to the side. There's enough butter on the sides. This is not going nowhere. Now we'll try to get this out. It's like getting the first piece of pie. There we go. Ooh, look at the steam coming off that. I know you guys want me to taste this, but I'm I'm really thinking I don't want to taste it. <laughs> okay, hold on just a moment. Let me get this back out of the way. Without burning myself. Steam's coming off that. It looks delicious. Look at that. You got the sausage, layer of hash browns with the egg baked down in there. Cheese caramelized on the top. I like using the dried peppers because they just decorate the top. They're all just red, green, yellow, orange everywhere. So I'm just going to get try to get a bite here because everybody gets mad when Greg doesn't take a bite of his food, which I always try to. That doesn't need anything on top. That is delicious. I can taste that garlic. I can taste the hot sauce. It's not hot, but I can taste the flavor of the hot sauce. I get some more of those potatoes. Mm. Now this is a go-to breakfast casserole. You're gonna want to put this in your in your uh, itinerary of recipes to make. So again, I want to thank you guys all for joining us with this marching in with casseroles 2024. This is our fourth year. Can't wait till next year. It'll be our fifth year, and we'll probably be doing a cookbook along with it. I also want to thank everybody who's participated, all the other 16 channels, and especially all of the viewers who have been leaving the most beautiful comments for me, Mom, all the other channels. I've been going to the other channels, and I'm reading their comments and seeing what everybody's saying. You guys are wonderful. Everybody feels so blessed to have you guys watching all of our channels. So don't forget, if you want to be eligible for the kitchen casserole, um, package you have to go to every channel and at least leave a comment but go ahead and like and subscribe to them it just helps them out and gets their uh, videos out to more people but on the 31st um and it is easter i apologize i didn't realize easter was so early this year it's crazy i mean it's spring already and easter's here so i will be doing it easter sunday on the 31st at 7 p.m i'll be drawing one channel um, that did a casserole and then I, from there I'll use the internet's um, comment uh, checker or comment picker I forget what it's called it's comment picker I believe and we'll just be picking one comment and that person's gonna win all five of those items in the um, package so y'all want to join us here again real soon because spring has sprung up here on Cumberlatcha the flowers are blooming there's wild violets there's my trillium 
everything is blooming up here. We just came out of, I think we just came out of red bud winter. All the red bud trees are blooming up here. And you can make jelly out of that. I'm trying to see if I can give me some red buds and do that and show you guys how to make red bud jelly. But we just came out of red bud winter. Um, if you're not familiar with the folklore, there are five little winters here in Tennessee. I'm going to go into that more in my next video and tell you about all of those and how we know when we're going through each one. So until next time, I appreciate y'all. Don't forget to watch Mama Vera this week on Friday. And I believe we have two more coming up. Uh, oh, one more. No, two more. Wednesday and Thursday before Mom's comes up. And then I'll see you guys again on Sunday. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for joining in with Marching In with Casseroles. And we'll see you real uh, again real soon. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.